This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. This chapter is covering flow control. And I'm going to start with the if statement. So this section will be the if. I'm going to keep with the procedure that we were using in the last chapter, our log it procedure. We're going to enhance that so that we can make it a little bit more useful. We can decide where we want our output to go instead of forcing it to either a table or to the console. So we'll do that by adding a new parameter and some logic. Let's look at our parameter. We're going to say we want our output target. It's an in, remember that's like a constant, of a string. It's going to default to T, which is, if we come down and look, the output target may be T for table or D for dbms output. So how did I do that? So I said, in the code, if the V output target is T, then we want it to go to the table. Else, if the output is D, we want it to do the console. So now that I've done that, I can run this. I would expect this one to go to the table, this one to go to the table, and then this one I would expect to go to the screen. So I got my hello again. That's the one I expected to go to the screen. And I've got the two. Where am I in hello world to the table? So my if statement is working correctly. So again, T for table, D for DBMS output. Now I'm going to make another change. I'm going to send this one to DBMS output, but I don't want to give it a string. So if you can look on the screen right below my cursor, the format is V message, which is a string, and V output target. So how do I tell it I just want to set the output target, but I want the default to be there? I use named notation for my parameter. The parameter is v output target. And I say the value of that will be d. So I'm using named notation to tell it where I want it to go. So now I would expect hello world and hello again to go to the console. And I would expect where am I to go to the table. Hello world, hello again. And refresh this, and we got our where am I that I just ran at 1340, 1340. So that's working as expected. Let me just cover that notation again. So named notation, you actually give it the name. Positional notation, they're in the same position as they're declared in the procedure. You can also have a mixture of positional and named. You can't do named and then positional because positional is expecting it to be in the correct order. But you could say position one is my string, and then I could do that. So I can go from positional to named, but I can't go from named to positional. Generally, it's best not to mix them. Either go with named or go with positional. I usually go with positional up to two or three parameters. Anything more than that, I try to make myself use named. It's just easier to debug. All right, so I did that. What happens if I say, let's do a P? I don't have a P defined. All I have defined is T or D. So where would we expect that to go? Let's go ahead and clear that out. We'll run it with the P. Okay, we got the hello again. Let's go look at our log table. That was at 1341. At 1341 and 30, I got that. But I don't have my hello world. That's from earlier. So basically, it's a lost message. If we go look at our code, I said, if it's T, do it to the table. If it's D, do it to DBMS output. Anything else is just going to fall through and nothing's going to happen. So what I need to do is add an else. And I'll add something like a recursive call. So basically, if it's not a T, it's not a D, it's going to call log it with a T saying it can't find that. So let's try it again. Let's compile this. Let me go ahead and clean this out. So I'll select them all, hit delete, save it. The refresh just to make sure. So I would expect to see this one say it couldn't find that type. I would expect this to go to DBMS output, and I would expect the last one to go to the table as a good record. So let's go ahead and run that. There we go. We've got the hello again, which hello again I was expecting. And the table should have two records, one of which is an error. Error v output p not found, and where am I? So that's working as expected. Next up will be converting our if to a case statement, so we can get a pretty good feel for that. 